good morning students today we will uh, discuss about the different control strategies those are called advanced control uh, strategies uh, in last class we have discussed about the control strategies using pneumatic control actions and um, major categories of pneumatic control actions are two types motion balance type and force balance type we discussed uh, both the types and their working principle mathematical modeling uh, all next uh, is the advanced control strategies that is for electronic controller and their advancements so for electronic controller uh, we will try to cover the uh, topics that electronic pid controller that is analog electronic controller uh, ic based which is also obsolete uh, nowadays then the programmable controllers that is from microprocessor to uh, digital control systems that is distributed control systems all are programmable controllers so um using this programmable controllers those are uh, nowadays uh, using uh, controllers then major advantage of this uh, digital control systems or programmable control systems are bumpless transfer i will discuss in detail what is bumpless transfer during auto, uh, manual transfer and integral wind up is a major problem uh, for pneumatic control systems but for programmable controller this uh, problem can be uh, avoided that is integral wind up uh, problem prevention and distinguish between the position algorithm and velocity algorithm for implementation of pid controller uh, in programmable control systems and Uh, finally the advantages of the, this velocity uh, algorithms over position algorithm so we will try to cover these uh, topics under this section this is electronic pid controller uh, ic based op amp based simply uh, you all know that this is uh, the uh, amplifier system that that will behave as a Uh, p action a uh, proportional part integral control system that is integral action can be derived by r c uh, in feedback path capacitor and for derivative control action the r c uh, along with this um, uh, feedback resistance a derivative action can be generated so uh, just the addition of p i and d will uh, give the pid output that is the um, controller output is kp uh, et plus 1 by tau integral et and uh, uh, tau d that is the um, derivative action time d dt so that will be the final output from the controller since uh, we all are familiar with this uh, um, ic based systems the integral action type and derivative action type so the output will be like this in next level the digital controller that is the programmable controller how that can be uh, programmed that is a basic aspect for a digital control system for digital control system the error signal is first sampled and the controller output is computed numerically through the digital processor the uh, for all uh, controller the controller output should be like this for pid controller this is the proportional effect then this is integral and this is derivative action type but for all there is a major important thing is the error signal how this error signal can be computed uh, or error signal can be sampled from the uh, response say error signal is a time varying signal if this is a uh, error signal 
that signal may be sampled for a small interval and equal sampling interval t0. So after t0, this is the first interval, then second interval, then third interval. And this is say e1 t, e2 t, e3 t like that. So the uh, error signal is the sum of uh, this et, uh, small intervals, uh, rather et1, et2 like that, sum of all these signals from t0 to uh, up to t, that is uh, total time. So this is the sampling uh, interval, then how d d t can be calculated? The uh, first is et, then integral et a, a, dt and d d t. d d t can be calculated as the difference between the uh, sampling instant and the previous sample sampling time that is e k minus e k minus 1 and integral integral is the sum of the uh, uh, all e i's so i equals 0 to k minus 1 t0 uh, t0 is the sampling interval and how many intervals are there e i where i is 0 to k minus 1 so t is k into t0 that is number of intervals are k so putting these uh, integral values and derivative action values the expression looks like this this is called the this algorithm is known as position algorithm for each position for, uh, for this uh, say e k that is for kth instant e k minus 1 the previous instant and sum of this means all intervals uh, the error, uh, error signals should be measured. So this is the problem of position algorithm that uh, we should know all the uh, intervals error values because that is a variable parameter, not that the error for all the um, uh, intervals are same. Velocity algorithm is just the, uh, for this error signal say, uh, this is the response for this is for kth instant if we consider for just for the previous instant say k minus 1 u k minus 1 is uh, just putting k minus 1 in place of k we will get the uh, previous instant uh, output uh, values that is just put k minus 1 in place of k so where that was k minus 1 that will be k minus 2 and this will be k minus 1. Now by uh, differentiating this and this that is u k and u k minus 1 is the differential change between the two instants. So u k minus u k minus 1 is the differential uh, time uh, uh, differential uh, response. So just put the values and simplify then we will get q0 is the constant e k see the functions are e k e k minus 1 and e k minus 2 so there is a no time signals uh, for uh, position algorithm we should know all the uh, instant uh, values of uh, all uh, error signal values for uh, the whole response characteristics but for derivative control action uh, sorry for uh, velocity algorithm the differential change that is for the instance e k only k minus 1 and k minus 2 rather for k minus 1 the previous uh, instant uh, error value and the next inter, uh, interval uh, error value we should know. We need not to uh, gather information for all the instant values of error signals. That is the velocity algorithm. If we compare this position and velocity algorithm, the major advantage of velocity algorithm, it is of recursive type. 
that is uh, for position algorithm error values at all the time instants are to be stored that is a major difference uh, for velocity algorithm it calculates the incremental output at each sample instant as a result it requires only to store three values ek ek minus 1 and ek minus 2 but for uh, position algorithm due to the difference between the set point and output variable it is always possible possible that existing error will wind up existing error will wind up and the values of sum ek be large when the switching from manual to auto mode takes place that is the problem of uh, integral wind up i am repeating that for position algorithm due to difference between the set value and output variable that is the error it is always possible that existing error will be wind up the error wind up will occur due to integral effect that is the summing effect that should be large uh, when switching from manual to auto mode will take place when manual to auto mode uh, transfer is required i'm coming to that point uh, later but uh, uh, sometimes uh, due to uh, uh, machine malfunctioning say for instrumental failure uh, the auto mode should turn off and for the time being ma uh, manually the system should run that is uh, and after repairing uh, the instrumental failure again it should be switched from manual to auto mode in that situation this integral wind up may occur but for uh, velocity algorithm this will be prevented because this will consider only three instant values not the sum of uh, time signals that means for all the uh, values when we will consider the summing values uh, then only the error wind up possibilities will arise since it provides only incremental change in input so the major uh, features are prevention of integral wind up and protection against computer failure uh, again uh, the integral wind up the actual situation how it happens and how it can be overcome uh, i will discuss later uh, but uh, the digital control system is the only way out for uh, taking care of this uh, integral wind up however there are certain pitfalls of velocity algorithm also because uh, we are talking about the uh, advantages of velocity algorithms but uh, there are certain disadvantages also for velocity algorithm in case of presence of noise in the measurement of error signal at a particular sampling instant the controller will immediately act that means uh, the controller will treat this error, uh, signal as a error signal even if it is a noise signal because it cannot uh, distinguish the noise and error uh, separately so controller will immediately act when a signal is present so taking uh, and it uh, it is considered by the controller as a signal but in position algorithm the integral term will prevent such a quick action because uh, it will consider the whole signal so uh, instantaneously the change that is due to noise will not affect but for velocity algorithm since that is, this is the incremental change so noise may uh, affect uh, uh, as a uh, or may be treated as a signal um, to the controller sometimes a digital filter uh, with low pass characteristics is used to filter out the unwanted noise before it reaches to the controller input so first level programmable controller is microprocessor based controller microprocessor based controller uh, the advantages are uh, obviously this is more economic uh, 
other than uh, this control systems it can do several algebraic operations integral desaturation signal processing uh, signal processing is much more accurate than analog systems can perform logical switching operation nonlinear system control can also be performed in much better way and integral tracking and bumpless transfer from manual to auto mode can be easily handled so this is the first level of programmable controller that is microprocessor based controller uh, and since this is programmable so we will get the features of uh, programming uh, other than control system so it can uh, operate the, uh, uh, the algebraic functions other functions also that is the control uh, of uh, different uh, elements uh, that can be done by microprocessor based systems signal processing is much more accurate than analog systems and logical switching operations can be performed nonlinear system control uh, can be uh, handled in a better way and the more importantly the uh, integral tracking and bumpless transfer from auto manual auto to manual mode sorry manual to auto mode can be easily handled that is the major problem uh, of manual to auto transfer that the that during transfer a huge bump may occur and that occurs due to this integral wind up that is a error winding up so that can be prevented by uh, the programmable controller as we have mentioned using velocity control systems now uh, the uh, bumpless transfer uh, issues say this is the uh, uh, use of pid controller in automatic mode that this is the pid controller p d and i unit and this is the summing unit uh, so uh, after getting uh, the p i and d output the, uh, the uh, uh, from the summing in unit we we will get the pid controller output and the input to pid unit is the uh, error signal that is the uh, through measuring uh, system so there must be uh, an input that is the input coming from the process so the, this is the input coming from process so uh, that goes through measuring system and the error detector so the error will uh, uh, the error detector is the um, comparator from the measured signal and the set point signal this is set point transmitter through which the set point is set to the uh, sent to the error detector so error detector is the unit which compares the measured signal with the set point loop uh, and the output is the error signal so this is the error signal that uh, uh, comes to the pid units and this is the kp into e this is kp by ti uh, this is kp by ti integral edt and this is kp uh, kp kd uh, ddt so after uh, coming from the summing unit that will come to the auto manual station this is the m station is the auto manual station and the output from this auto manual station is the uh, signal that will go to the um, uh, final control element so there that is um, there must exist the final control element that is the one this is the uh, controller output through auto manual station sent to the final control element so uh, for um, automatic mode this will run in this way but for manual uh, when it switch to the manual uh, mode why it should require to switch in the manual mode because if uh, through this whole control loop path if any 
error, uh, any failure occurs, any instrumental failure occurs, then uh, temporarily the automatic controller uh, is uh, removed from the uh, control loop, but the system cannot be stopped because that will, uh, if the total control loop, uh, operation becomes stopped, then what will happen? Um, ultimately, the plant uh, failure uh, will occur. So, the controller, uh, if uh, due to instrumental failure, the controller uh, temporarily becomes um, uh, failed, then it should be transferred to the manual mode. This is the manual switch that should be transferred to the manual mode. And this set point transmitter is uh, also called a manual loader. So, uh, that means the signal is uh, instead of sending to the error detector unit, that should be directly connected to the uh, manual station, uh, AM station, then the signal should be transferred to the final control element temporarily uh, so that the system can run. This is the manual mode operation. For uh, during this uh, uh, manual mode running, then what will happen if just uh, simply this, this is connected to the manual uh, station, uh, this is also called manual loader. If we connect this to the uh, during manual mode operation, if we directly connect this to AM station, then what will happen? The manual signal will send to the um, uh, AM station by some expert operator, which uh, and this this signal should be a comparable signal which is coming uh, which was previously coming from the controller output. So by the expert operator that uh, comparable signal is sent through the manual uh, uh, switch to the final control uh, element so that the plant can run temporarily. And what will happen? During this operation, the same signal is coming to the uh, this side uh, uh, also. So uh, th since this is simply the um, amplifier, Proportional is just an amplifier, then the, the this will just uh, amplify the signal. Derivative is the DDT. So, uh, since this is constant, the, this output is a constant output. This is uh, zero since error is constant, but uh, for integral, uh, due to this integral effect, what will happen? that will integrate over the time even if it's a constant value due to the time uh, integration the signal uh, a large signal will store to the uh, output that is not transferred to the uh, final control element due to the manual uh, switch operation but the switch, uh, the signal a large signal will be continuously generating at the other side. Then when the op uh, technical operation will over and it will again place to the automatic mode, what will happen? A large signal which is stored at the uh, other side will instantaneously sent, uh, will be instantaneously sent to the final control element and that will cause a huge bump. That means the valve may uh, get to the stuck up position either to the 0% opening or to the 100%. Any side that is fully closed or fully open, the valve will uh, face a huge energy and it will um, move to the maximum positions or minimum positions. That means the, and uh, it may cause the stuck up condition of valve due to huge energy transfer that is called the bump or that causes the integral uh, due to the integral wind up only culprit is the integral signals because 
this is the constant signal, this is zero signal, but this is the integration, integration output. So due to this integral wind up, a huge energy will produced at the other side. So that is the problem of manual to auto transfer. Am I clear? That uh, for automatic mode, this is running fine uh, since the error is uh, error detector is uh, uh, comparing the set point signal to the measured signal and the error signal fed to the PID uh, individual uh, operations, then the summing unit will produce the PID control action um, and that will send to the final control element. When uh, it should transfer to the manual mode, just the uh, 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 through manual loader, this signal can be directly connected uh, to the final control element through manual uh, auto manual station or auto manual switch that will transfer a comparable energy which was initially produced by the automatic controller uh, and that will be transferred manually uh, through the manual switch to the final control element temporarily so that the operation can run so that it uh, cannot be uh, plant cannot be stopped but the problem is during this manual mode operations since the signal is connected here also the constant this is the constant error because the constant energy is sent but this constant error will produce the constant uh, output this will produce d d t is zero but for this integral effect the problem is uh, this is constant, but since this is time integral, this will cause a huge energy uh, generation, a large energy generation, and that will be stored at the other side of auto manual station. And when the um, uh, technical uh, repairing work will over, and it will be switched to the manual to auto mode again, then what will happen? this signal will cut off and the um, other side signal that is the controller automatic controller output will send to the final control element but due to this uh, manual operation period a large energy uh, is generated and stored that will suddenly will be transferred to the final control element and that may cause uh, uh, due to change of large energy uh, energy change, the final control element will face a bump and that may cause the stack up condition at 0% opening or 100% opening. That is either in fully closed position or in fully open position. So that is definitely a problem and that is due to integral effect that is called integral wind up. So the, uh, this problem can be avoided for programmable control systems only. How that can be done? That is called integral tracking because the problem is integral wind up. So the pr uh, problem can be handled by tracking the integral effect and that is called the bumpless transfer procedure. How that can be done? the measuring system can be shorted instead of sending the set point signal here this uh, should be directly connected to the auto manual station and during manual operation this signal will be transferred to the final control element instead of transferring the automatic controller output side and at that time the since this is shorted then the output of these two is zero and the integral effect should be connected as a integral tracker. The same signal should be transferred through, uh, through the integral unit so that the similar energy which is transferring uh, 
uh, through manual loader um, by the auto manual station the same energy can be generated at the other side this is not uh, at this time this is not producing the integral effect rather this is working as a tracker that means the same signal should be transferred through this and this can be done only by programming um, facility not by using hardware so and uh, as we have al already discussed that using velocity algorithm uh, we can uh, achieve this bumpless transfer and the integral tracking so this is the um, major um, advantage of using digital control systems in next level that is the first level uh, digital control system or programmable control system using microprocessor based controller in next level the computer is used in the control systems and uh, several years uh, in different stages uh, the computers are used uh, for as a controller uh, rather in process control system the computers uh, are used in uh, different stages that is this is the computer uh, control systems not for using uh, directly for control system but uh, as a supervisory unit the first level control this is the plant so the, uh, the process uh, the plant is connected with the specialized field controllers that is uh, that may be pneumatic controller or hydraulic controller that is specialized control uh, field controllers for specialized um, process variables and uh, uh, this is the electronic controller maybe analog controllers uh, this is second level control systems with operator display where the display unit is the monitor monitor systems and the computer is used as, uh, as a supervisory level control in order to generate the control uh, of uh, signals for analog controllers and to monitor the um, uh, analog levels controllers the this is the supervisory console that means the monitor systems so this is the first level of using computer in next level this is the specialized controllers having no readout system this is along with readout system this is without readout systems that is field mounted controllers uh, specific controllers and analog controllers with readout system uh, to the operator in first level uh, computer using system there is no readout systems this is analog controllers with readout systems and operator display these are the uh, uh, several uh, years uh, pr in previous models those are used initially for uh, computer applications and this is the uh, higher level controller uh, computer uh, using digital computer using systems where this is the first uh, computer based control systems that the computer used as a controller say this is the digital computer and this is centralized control system this is called direct digital control is not that this is uh, ddc type direct digital control direct digital control means the con digital computer is connected directly to the process variables uh, to perform the control actions as well as the other control actions um, uh, the, uh, and the supervisory level controls can be performed using this co uh, computer and this is also centralized control systems because the single computer can control the plant whole plant how say this is a particular process variable uh, this symbol stands for flow control so this flow is measured by the measuring unit this is differential pressure transmitter and then the signal is sent 
through the IP multiplexer unit that is uh, multi-channeled uh, multiplexer unit. So through the uh, particular channel, the signal is sent to the computer. So the multiplexer output is a current signal, then voltage uh, I to V converter that sent to the through the uh, analog to digital converter and the digitized signal of the process variable is sent to the computer. Then computer uh, will um, take the control action and the controller output will send through the demultiplexer. This is output demultiplexer unit because uh, like this process variable through the several channels, different uh, process variables should come through the multiplexer unit and all are coming to the computer. So that will compare with the set value and the output, uh, the controller output will again send to the particular process control loop through the demultiplexer unit. So this is output demultiplexer unit, the corresponding output will send to the to that particular uh, control loop that is the final control element for uh, this uh, flow control loop. Similarly, the other signals will send to the different control loops. Along with this uh, control actions, this digital computer uh, will uh, take the um, control of input multiplexer uh, unit the control signal should be generated by this in uh, uh, digital computer. The output controller that should be connected here. The output uh, demultiplexer, output demultiplexer should be connected here. That is. the digital computer to this. The co computer will control the output demultiplexer uh, unit by generating the control signal. And these are the monitors, the console control and several process variables can be monitored in several consoles. So this is the whole process of direct digital control. This is the whole process of direct digital control. But uh, the problem is for this direct digital control, the uh, centralized control system is used here. So the uh, as this is the centralized computer, if the com computer fails, then what will happen? The total plant will shut down. That is the major disadvantage. And uh, because whole control actions uh, is controlled by a single computer. So this is the first level of uh, operation of con computer or application of computer for as a controller. So this centralized control system should be used along with the backup systems of individual control loops or for say number of control loops, the backup systems should be there. Otherwise, we, uh, when the central computer will fail, the total plant will shut down. That is called all or nothing problem. And another problem is uh, major cost of cabling. Since single computer uh, is uh, connected as a central, present as a centralized uh, uh, control system, so all the process control loops should be connected uh, to the computer and the output signal from the controller output, uh, computer output should be again connected. Uh, so uh, there is a huge cable uh, networking cost and multi. Uh, uh, and complexity uh, will also a major problem. So in order to avoid these problems, in next level, 
the distributed control systems where uh, in today's control systems mostly the controllers are distributed control systems so uh, since the distributed control systems uh, in detail uh, we have in a uh, another paper of advanced process process control so we will just uh, uh, give you the brief uh, introduction of this uh, distributed control systems and another is programmable logic controller so we will take a separate class of programmable logic controller and distributed control systems and their use in uh, industry how they complement each other or how, uh, how they have used both or uh, which one is advantageous there is a comparison between the programmable logic controllers and distributed control systems so we will discuss uh, in a separate class uh, about uh, dcs and plc so that is uh, and up to um, this this is the advanced control uh, strategies and nowadays all controllers are programmable controller and digital controller mostly either dcs or plc so in uh, next class we'll discuss about the uh, process modeling okay thank you